Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh, thanks for joining me today. Well, we're talking about the big TikTok ban that's going on in the US right now. Uh, we're gonna talk about all sides of it. I think you're gonna be surprised at my take, even though you guys know that I want it gone, right? But for my reasons are different than other people's reasons, okay? But I think my reasons should be the only reason that it happens. But I also, as I'm doing my research, I'm realizing it's not, it's, it's a bit nuanced, right? It, it, on one hand, doing this gives the government a lot of power that the government shouldn't have. And I, as you know, I'm a libertarian. And I don't. I feel like the government shouldn't have as much power as it has. Obviously, it wastes so much. I pay so much money in tax because my government wastes so much money. So that's one thing I wouldn't like is the government have more control. But as you know, my Roman Empire is to see kids off the internet and giving their privacy back and safety returned. And so it's a, it's it's something we need to talk about. So let's get to it. So if you didn't know, I think the entire United States, all 50 states, is there 50 states? 50 states, uh, is trying to get rid of TikTok, ban it, for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a Chinese psyop, and it's that's not a con, that's not a conspiracy theory, it's not a tinfoil hat. That is literally what it is. It's gathering information and data on 180 million users in the US, and I don't know, a few million here in Canada, and millions and billions all over the world, right? That's what it's doing. That's its, its point is to get into, like, China is so smart when it comes to this thing, and the reason you know that it's doing what it's doing is because you can't see the same type of content in a communist country that you can see in the US on TikTok. TikTok is so pervasive, it allows social contagions to take hold in, in communities like ours who, where free speech is, is very, very welcomed, right? Uh, one good thing about TikTok is that it actually lets people in on what's going on in the, in the real world. The news is hot there, it's fresh. People can get people get real news there, right? Because the, the mainstream media news outlets are garbage, especially here in Canada and the US. We know they are. Uh, one of the most recent things is you guys know I don't like Trump. Right? I, I absolutely think that the, the choices you have of the president is the is the most it's 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 crazy to me that it's between a guy who eats applesauce and can't walk upstairs and a guy who's a complete and utter douchebag. These are your choices, and that's I'm scared for your country. Okay. But that being said, the mainstream media is can't not be trusted because Trump's up there saying something about like uh, if the car industry goes down, it's going to be a bloodbath. And every single mainstream media who is on the side of the Democrats is like, oh, look what he said. And it's like it's the craziest thing ever. And so TikTok, Twitter, X and all these other places allow for conversations to go on and people to be fact check and talk about it, debate it, argue it. And it's a really important medium. Social media. It used to be that mainstream media puts everybody in check and is the checks and balances. Now social media is the check and balance against mainstream media. And so that's one good thing that TikTok does. It actually spreads news in real time in things that mainstream media won't touch or will lie about. Okay. And that's on all sides, right and left. Okay. That's a very, very big benefit to TikTok and social media. That's why I go on Twitter though. I'm sitting there scrolling X, doom scrolling. That's just go on X if you want the news. All that to say, you guys know my... Roman Empire, though, is to, is to remove kids off the internet. And TikTok is the Wild West, disgusting, toxic cesspool of child exploitation, including Ran, Garza Crew, all these big ones. Everyone that I cover on YouTube, they're also on TikTok, and they have millions of followers and supporters on TikTok as well. TikTok can make a lot of people a lot of big money, and that's why they do it. But TikTok doesn't give a crap about creators like me who call out those creators. Now, I know you're all bitter, and so I'm a bit bitter. Yeah, I'm on a platform. YouTube protects my free speech, protects me to say what I want to say against these people, even though it's probably even against YouTube. They want these kids on there, too. They make a lot of money, but they protect me, okay? I'm allowed to say what I say as long as I say within the law, and I am within my law because I'm giving an opinion, and I'm using fair use practices, which YouTube has robust fair use practices, which is great. It allows me to make money and do what I want to do on here. TikTok says, oh... You're gonna come after our big creators? F off. All you have to do is mass report somebody and you're gone instantly. TikTok has no protections for people, for checks and balances. That's on purpose, okay? That's not just calling out child exploiters. That's calling out anything that they don't want you to talk about. TikTok will curate in the algorithm pervasive topics to get people fighting all the time. But if you call it the wrong thing, they'll just remove you. They want the toxicity. That's the point. OK, I know if you don't know what a psyop is, it's like they're in there. It's, it's, it's yeah, it makes money. But the psyop is that it, 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 it basically tears down a country. It tears down social conversations. It has one sided things. And it's a place where like you go on YouTube and Doherty doesn't will drop a video and fill in her kids fridges with like candy. And there's like tons of negative comments. Go over to TikTok and watch the same video. 
There's no negative comments. None. It's crazy. And it's not that she's deleting bad comments because she likely is to a degree, but there's like none. There's thousands of comments and barely any of them are calling her out. That's because that's TikTok is full of those types of people. It's really weird because our message, people that call out family vloggers and stuff like that, doesn't get put out there. On YouTube, our message is loud and clear. A big creator the other day, what's her name? Callie, uh, Calmetrix, Calmetrix, I don't know, Calmetrix, 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 I don't know her name. She's a Canadian YouTuber who has 10.8 million subscribers, released a video that has almost a million views on the Ren Jacqueline situation. And like this person, you know, it's very, very, very big deal for her to call this out. I call it out. Every creator, even my enemies, we're all on board for calling out Jacqueline and uh, for what she's doing to Ren on, t on YouTube. And everybody knows that's wrong on YouTube. But TikTok subdues this message that we have because they don't want us talking about it. They don't want us calling out child exploitation because they want it to be big on there. They want it to prove because it's a perversive, toxic thing that gets into a culture and is terrible for the culture. And it wants that. Does that make sense? I know that sounds like a tinfoil hat thing, but they wants that because it's bad. TikTok wants all the bad things to be talked about and to be pervasive in the culture including TikTok dances, including thirst traps, including pornography, including all this garbage about influencer culture. And as you know, I hate influencer culture, guys. You know I hate it. And when, when I'm scrolling on Instagram and looking for topics to talk about, I'm just like, I get, I, I find myself more and more just being like, oh my gosh, I hate these people who set up tripods uh, to, to do these, to hug their husband or to like cry in a car with the camera on or like take a picture of me and like, so, like selfie culture. Like this culture is very, very bad. Okay, that's, it's very bad for our children. It's very bad for us. But more importantly, it's bad for the entire culture. And if I had my choice as a dictator, all social media would be gone. It is a toxic cesspool of garbage that our society is not benefiting from. There are a few tiny percentage of people that benefit from it, from making money. I do. I'll admit it here. I make good money on this platform. But if I had my choice, I would get rid of it. I absolutely I think a lot of creators would say the same thing. It is not bringing any net positive to our world at all, except for bringing people closer together. And that's, if that's all it did, then we would be good, but it's not all it does. There's so much more to it. And there's so many people hurting themselves and unaliving themselves because of it. Okay. This culture is bad. And one of the most disgusting parts of this culture is the exploitation of children, which is what I do here again, which is my Roman empire. I want to see social media. I want to see people who exploit children and social media companies who allow it to be held accountable for what they've done because we haven't even seen the outcome yet. And the outcome that we have seen the little bits that we get to see are all bad. All of them. None of these kids are doing well. Okay. And it, and at the worst, they're unaliving themselves, which we saw at the Senate hearing where, um, where Zuckerberg had to stand up and apologize to people for that. Okay. There's a whole bunch of families there that were there and that's what happened. Now, AI is just making this more dangerous and it is being fed by social media platforms. People want to take a picture of anybody and turn it into uh, CSAM. They can do it instantly. It takes seconds. Okay. It takes seconds to do it. And it is getting crazy and scary. Okay, so that's just one more big thing we got to worry about. And no one seems to be caring about it. So when I go back to TikTok, you go on there and there's people like Mom and Chart and there's a couple of people who do it, but they're very, very, very small voices. And if you notice, they don't call people out by name because they know they'll get the video removed and it might be banned. You, TikTok doesn't allow it. YouTube, let's go. That's why I love it. And so that's one of the biggest differences. And that's why I want to see TikTok gone now. Read this. If TikTok is banned, free speech litigation could follow. Legal battle would force courts to weigh the government's national subject security objectives against First Amendment rights. Now, this is one thing that really scares me about the banning of TikTok. OK, when the government has to step in because people are being dumb about it, then you're like, well, the government also is dumb about it. So you got to choose the lesser of the two evils and the lesser of the two evils, unfortunately, is the people. Because the government stepping in and taking full control means that there is a select tiny group of people inside of a bureaucracy that sets the that sets laws, rules for the entire population. That's not good because whoever's in your government, whether it be left or right. OK, they set that policy that sets it for everybody. They're not. Look, guys, there's no such thing as bipartisan government anymore. It doesn't exist anymore. It is gone. We can all agree on that, I think. So if Biden's government is in there and saying, well, we, this is the rules we're going to do, then you're going to have to adhere to far left principles if you are libertarian like me in the center or you're right. OK, and then everybody. And, and, and the thing is, is it's so divided. It's not like everybody's far left, not even the majority. It's not even close. OK, there's a major, There's a silent minority that sits in the center that's generally centrist politically. And they don't even know it or they do know it. And then there's a far left and there's a far right. 
Okay, that's how this that's how it always has worked. But the fringes have the loudest voices, and that's how it's always worked as well. And they are going to set the policy that's going to change the game for everybody. You never want to give the government more control ever. Okay. But, and I've said this on my channel a multiple times, sometimes you just have no choice. When it comes to the safety of minors specifically, you really don't have a choice. Because these parents like Jacqueline and Garza Crew and Weiss Life and Jess Fam and Doherty Dozen and LeBrantz and everybody that I talk about on here, they clearly don't care about their children. They don't care about their safety. They don't. And it's so evident in their content. They don't care. And so unfortunately, it's up to the government to say, well, if these parents aren't going to care, we're going to have to care. And that's why there are rules that get kids taken away from their parents, because there are parents who don't care. So there are laws in place for those types of people. And unfortunately, this is an area where the government needs to step in and is stepping in. Okay, the TikTok ban isn't because of child exploitation. I mean, it's probably part of it, but it's more about like the Chinese PSYOP than anything else. The government's worried about what's happening pervasively to its population, and it should be scared because it's crazy what's happening. Okay, so that's one reason I would not want the TikTok ban to go forward. There are a lot of people who do good things on TikTok, who have great talents, who are funny, who do amazing things. It's really, really great stuff, which you can find on any platform, by the way, because generally they're on every one of them. They're on Instagram, they're on... Uh, Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're all on all the ones, okay? So if there's a video on TikTok, you're likely going to find it on all their other platforms. It's not like you're not going to get their content, okay? Uh, but again, TikTok, like I said, is the only one that really, really, really stifles people like me who call out that behavior. So that's why I'm like, let's do it ban it because it's not like it's banning all social media and I, and, I, and there's there's a part of me that's just like morbidly curious to see what would happen when TikTok is gone, because it's a pretty big social media platform, probably the biggest, if not second biggest, next to YouTube. Um, and I really want to just see what happens. As a, like, I know that's crazy to say that, right? It's like, okay, I want to see what happens. Let's do it. But again, there are people, and I cannot, I cannot stress this enough, that make their living on here um, and businesses that use it. And so I do understand why they wouldn't want to ban it. I do get that. But my Roman Empire is what it is. And that just means that I want to see it gone, and that's just my prerogative. That's my opinion, okay? The bipartisan TikTok, and here's the thing. This is the only, bi this is the craziest part about this, is that this is a bipartisan TikTok legislation. This means that both sides are like unanimously like, get rid of TikTok. The bipartisan TikTok legislation that sailed through the house this past week gives the company and its Chinese-controlled parent ByteDance a stark choice. Sell the platform or face a ban. Now, that's the thing. It's not just like, we're going to ban TikTok. They're giving them an alternative. Sell it to an American company so it's American run and American owned, or we're going to get rid of it. And ByteDance doesn't want that because ByteDance isn't about the money. They don't give a shit. Chinese government, the CCP isn't about the money. They don't care. They don't care. It's like a, it's nothing to them. They And the reason they're so reluctant to give it up is because of the PSYOP that it is, and it's so successful at doing that. That's way more valuable to them than any money selling it. They don't want to sell it. They don't, because if it gets sold, then people like me are going to be able to get on TikTok and start calling it out. It's going to be really useless to the CCP at that point. And so that's an alternative that I would like to see happen. Sell it to an American company. Maybe Elon will buy it, right? And then bring it back to what it's supposed to be, a free speech platform for all people to call out anybody they want or say whatever they want, okay? Because again, I know that sounds like I'm bitter and I'm a little bit bitter because I've been banned off TikTok like five times. Just because my message is about is, and the thing that makes me upset about it is because my message isn't like bad. I'm not, I'm not out there like asking for CSAM. I'm, I'm telling people to stop putting it out there. And TikTok is like, no, you can't say that. That's crazy to me. TikTok though may go for option three, sue the government. It isn't guaranteed that the Senate will pass Biden back legislation, but if the bill is approved, it would shut down TikTok's U.S. operations unless sold to a non-Chinese owner. ByteDance would have six months to comply. Since China has already signaled its opposition for a forced sale, the fate of the video app juggernaut could ultimately be decided in federal courts. And your federal courts, especially in the U.S., are stacked with conservatives. So I'm actually not sure how that's going to go because conservatives are pro-free speech generally, Right. Like the right is more pro free speech than the left is. Like the left isn't for free speech as much as the right is. That's for sure. So I'm not sure that's actually going to go. The U.S. has long restricted foreign ownership of radio and television broadcasting, but Congress has never taken such drastic action against an internet platform used by millions of Americans to communicate. Now, one thing that really scares me is the the movement of this could potentially 
if written and hidden well inside the legislation, could make it so the government could shut down any social media platform like X. And I think that's kind of like, if you think about it, they don't want X running. Okay, as a person who loves free speech, who thinks the government should have more, should not have more control, X is their worst nightmare. X used to be their fa- their favorite best friend. Okay, until the X file, until Twitter files dropped, and they realized that the government was using it to stifle the speech they didn't want. Both governments, not right, not le- I mean right and left, both were doing it. Okay, and the and the and the platform was complying. Which is, are you serious? How are you going to have like this again? And they and people will be like, well, it's owned by a private. Let them do what they want. Right. But when it becomes so big that it can change the way that politics are driven, that's it's changes. That's just the reality of it. So again, this if the government takes control and wants to like stifle the speech on the internet, which is where it's going to ultimately end up anyway, no matter what you guys think, it's going to end up there. It's going to end up there in all of our countries, just so you're aware. Then that's why a lot of people are against this and should be. The legislation doesn't authorize enforcement actions against U.S. residents who attempt to keep using the app. Judges in previous TikTok litigation have recognized that the app's fans have constitutional free speech rights in posting and consuming content that would be harmed by its shutdown. So it doesn't ban people from from watching it, using it. And if you have a VPN, I'm likely you'll likely be able to continue doing it. But those people who make big money on here, I don't think you're going to be able to anymore because you're going to have to figure out where that money comes from. And you're going to have to tell the IRS it comes from this banned app in the U.S., I'm not sure how they're going to get around it. Um, I don't think it's really going to affect people who want to look at TikTok and be on there and just peruse it. Because if you have the app, it's going to be on your phone. You just won't be able to update it and you won't be able to download it on new devices. Okay. But there will the tech savvy people will get around this in 10 seconds with a VPN or with whatever. Someone's going to create something, a plugin or whatever that's going to work. But for the most part, it's going to, most people aren't like that though. Like the majority of people aren't tech savvy. Okay. So if there's 180 million users, it's probably going to go down to more like 20 million users. So, and that's going to just basically destroy the app, which good, good. Anyway, government lawyers in that litigation described China's control of TikTok as an unacceptable threat that could give the Chinese government access to Americans' personal information, enable to spy on federal employees and allow it to participate in corporate espionage. That's the, that's the thing that, that they're really worried about. And I understand that. We are in a time, very, very, very volatile time right now that it's not going to end well, guys. That's why I prep. You should prep too. I'm telling you. Nothing like this has ever occurred. And social media is like the catalyst for it, by the way. It's never occurred like this. The the thing going on with Israel and Gaza and China wanting to take back control of Taiwan. That's going to be a big thing you're going to see probably in the coming year or if not two years. Maybe it could be tomorrow. Okay. You got Russia and Ukraine. There's, it's just not, it's getting crazy. You got the Houthis out there blocking ships and increasing the price of everything. It is going to be a global world, world war and it's coming soon. Okay, and I'm not that's not a tinfoil hat that's happening and people who pay attention to the news can see it coming. So why would you want to give the your your enemy more power, right? More power to your data, more power to like hurt your citizens. That's that's ultimately what this is all about. And then this article on USA Today says House passes TikTok bill. What are TikTok are TikTok days numbers are TikTok days numbered? It's hard to say that. The House voted overwhelmingly to approve the measure that would ban TikTok from operating in the United States or force a sale, posing the most serious threat to the yet popular short-form video platform. The bill passed the House 352 to 65. And most notably, and notably, like people like AOC and Marguerite Taylor Greene are the ones who are like opposed to it. Those people are are diametrically opposed in every other thing except for this. That that makes you wonder. But they're probably diametrically opposed for some reason opposite of each other, too. Um, With one member voting present, showing wide bipartisan support with backing from House Speaker Mike Johnson and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, it now heads to the Senate. Now, I've said this before. If Nancy Pelosi has her hand in something and is for something, it's likely because she's for something else. Her and her husband have made, I think, tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in the stock market based on her legislation that she helps pass for certain things. Okay, so this likely means that her and her husband are investing in other social media companies because their stock will explode if TikTok is gone. So if Nancy Pelosi has her finger in something, it means that she has her freaking ass in something else. Okay, she's sitting in a bucket of money somewhere else because she knows it. So anytime Nancy Pelosi votes on something, it's because it's going to help Nancy Pelosi and her family. Okay, be real. It now heads to the Senate where its fate is more uncertain. And that could be this week, could be uh, tomorrow, I think, they could vote on this. At issue, it's TikTok Chinese ownership. U.S. officials say parent company ByteDance could hand over the personal information of 170 million Americans who use the popular short uh, video app to Beijing. And that's the CCP, right? The bill's opponents have raised free speech concerns. They also say TikTok has taken steps to safeguard. No, they haven't. 
TikTok has not taken any safeguarding measures. Okay, let's for no social media press, no social media platform has. They say they have teams doing stuff. They don't do anything. Okay, they don't. They could and they don't because it's so easy to fix these problems because the way that they can target their political speech that they don't like is so easy for them. Get rid of people instantly. If I say something wrong, I could be banned in two seconds. I could be shadow banned easily by the algorithm picking up a word they don't like. Okay, they could fix this easily. They don't. So will the TikTok ban legislation pass in the Senate? Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has declined to say whether he would bring the measure to a vote. President Joe Biden has said he would sign the bill if it reaches his desk. Following today's House vote, I will be taking my Senate and House colleagues to try to find a path forward that is constitutional, protects, protects civil, civil liberties. It's a Chinese-owned business. It's not a, the Chinese. The CCP doesn't enjoy free speech rights in the U.S. As far as I'm concerned, okay, they're not a U.S. citizen. Cool, cool. What does TikTok say? TikTok says lawmakers are trying to shut down TikTok in the U.S. Yes, thanks, Captain Obvious. This process was secret and the bill was jammed through for one reason. It's a ban. Good. The company said in a statement Wednesday, we are hopeful that the Senate will consider the facts, listen to their constituents, and realize the impact on the economy. Seven million small businesses and the 170 million Americans who use their service. Will TikTok be banned? Even if the Senate passes the measure, a long fight lies ahead. TikTok says it will exercise its legal rights before it considers the sale of its U.S. operation. Now, I guess it has rights, even though it's owned by a Chinese company. I don't know how it's going to fight to the... I guess there's ways to do it, right? If you have money, you can do whatever you want. It's going to go to the Supreme Court for sure, and then it's gonna, we're going to figure out what's going to happen. How would a TikTok ban work? If signed into law, the bill would prevent app stores like Apple and Google from distributing or updating TikTok on web hosting companies from distributing it. Which is, that's if you don't think the government has control or want, in, in, in any moment could do something like this, you're living in a fantasy world. Now, this is just one thing. But if the government actually wants to stop you from having something, they will stop you from having it. Because they will just stop the companies from giving it to you. That's, how do you think they shut down our countries during COVID? Okay? They can just do whatever they want. This is the scariest part about this whole thing. Is that people now are starting to wake up to realize the government has so much power that it can do whatever it wants and those constituents have nothing to do with it. Okay? It's scary. Who would benefit from a TikTok ban? Kids. A ban on TikTok will hand an effective monopoly to Meta's Reels, the company's short-form video product. Forrester Vice President, uh, which means that the Reels that we watch on Instagram, which is where I watch my Reels too, by the way, it would. It would absolutely... face Meta would just explode, which... Take a look at Nancy Pelosi's investments because it's going to be all in Meta. You watch. So it just makes it just means that other companies will take will fill the vacuum. That's all that really means. Now, all that to say, I got a where is it here? This is a really important video by a really really important guy in social media. Okay, this is Gary V, and he's been on social media making millions. He's a businessman. He started with like a wine tasting thing and just exploded. Um, but listen to his take on this. It's really important. If TikTok gets banned in America, it's actually a good thing for us because everyone's gonna be confused where all the attention goes. I'll give you a bigger one, forget about TikTok. If all nine social networks disappeared tomorrow, I would be thrilled because the attention has to go somewhere. I'm not emotional about the distribution product I'm emotional about common sense and attention. Social media just happens to be the place where the attention is yep. now. If this was a 1968 conversation, I would be screaming at the top of my lungs about how important television commercials are. Anytime there's a shift of attention, we have grown. If yeah, so what he's telling you is don't be so worried about it. A lot of people are like, the world is falling apart. Look, if influencers disappeared, yes, tomorrow, today, who cares? It's really not gonna be a detriment to society. It's going to be an actual net positive, a benefit, hugely, hugely so, okay? Companies will find another way to advertise their products, okay? Influencer culture is toxic. It's poisonous. It's disgusting, generally overall. There are a lot of great influencers out there who are good with their platforms, but it's a very small amount. It is the exception, not the rule. The rule is a bunch of thirst trap ladies and dudes showing their ass and their pecs, and they're just like, look at this product, and they fake it. They sell dildos. They just like, it's just not, it's not. Influencer culture is just gross. And if they left tomorrow, no one would care. We really wouldn't. We would be better off. And you can't say that about a lot of things that are banned, but you could say that about influencer culture. It wouldn't matter in the least. It really wouldn't. And so what Gary Vee here is saying is that, look, if all disappear tomorrow, we'll make it as a human society, right? We'll figure it out. We have figured it out thus far and we will figure it out going forward. Okay, it's not the end of the world. So what? Uh, a few people won't make any money. They'll figure out another way to make money. Okay, real jobs exist. 
and it'll just be your attention will be directed somewhere else. It the vacuum will be there and it would be filled. That's just so don't worry about it is what I'm saying. All these family vloggers and people who make easy money on these platforms, they're worried. Am I worried? No. Because I can go do a real job. Because most of my life, most of my 44 years on this planet, I've been working real jobs and I can do it tomorrow. And I still do it today, actually. I still work real jobs because I like working. And I think it's, I want to be an important part of my my community. And I'm never going to, again, I, I, I do do this mostly full time, but I do other things, okay? Never going to, and those people out there who have made social media platforms their entire world, they're the ones going to hurt the most and they shouldn't have done it. That's just the way it goes. So even like banks know this. That's why a lot of creators have a hard time getting mortgages. Okay. Because they know that social media is fickle. Very, very fickle. And so it's very hard to like take loans out based on it and all that kind of stuff. It really, really is. So take that. Take what Gary Vee says as a form of like, okay, we're going to be okay if this shit happens. We will be okay. And here's the thing. In the real world of World War III, the things that are going to really happen are going to be electrical grids. It's not going to be just bombs dropped and the whole world's going to destroy. It's not going to happen. Okay. Not really. I hope not. Anyway, what's going to happen is social media companies are going to get hacked and destroyed. Banks are going to get hacked and destroyed. Electrical grids are going to be hacked and destroyed. Shipping ports are going to be hacked and destroyed. It's not going to be done through bombs. It's going to be done through the internet. Just so you're aware. So prep. Okay, cool. Uh, another guy, good take on this, Scott D. Henry. If you don't know who Scott D. Henry is, I follow him. He's an, he's an amazing creator, super funny guy. Uh, just, I don't know, he's just one of those guys you follow for just a good laugh, but he also has a, a bunch of great takes, um, including this one. Listen to this. I'm going to keep it 100% real with y'all. I don't want to see a TikTok ban. However, however, there is something that has come across my FYP. It's actually flooded my FYP. He's talking about Jacqueline and Ren. Again, they don't say it on here because they don't want to be mass banned, mass reported to get banned. That's the thing about TikTok that's so scary. This guy has a pretty big following. He can't even say their names. There is a woman who is exposing her daughter knowingly. Mm -hmm. She does it knowing that there are creeps using the content. Not only that, sorry to interrupt you, Scott. <laughs> she doesn't just knowingly do it she unpurposely does it so like knowingly oh could be so maybe i'll put it out there but you know most people don't no 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 no. she knows that they're going to use that content for that and puts it out there so knowingly i'm trying to say how do i say this correctly like on purpose does it strategically does it strategically makes the thumbnails with the girl holding a hot dog and put in her mouth and saying things like i swallowed it and stuff like that's strategic that's predatory so not just knowingly but strategically for horrible, horrible things. She gets horrible comments. I've seen the horrible comments, and it's a lot. And her kid has ended up on CSAM websites, by the way, including Pornhub. Of terrible things about this little, little baby girl, this little angel. And the mom does it, and it's disgusting, and it is makes my blood boil. It's the reason you rarely see my children on social media. Good for you. She does it knowing full well that she gets millions and millions and millions of views. TikTok is rewarding this mother yep. for exposing her child. And I said at the beginning, this is why TikTok is the most pervasive, toxic, disgusting piece of trash on the world. Because you can't get that same content in China. Okay, you can't do it. And so it's here and they, they just 17 million subscribers watching this child say things like, oh, I swallowed it. Is that okay? Or eating hot dogs or eating ice cream, putting phallic foods near her mouth or shaving her vagina or pretending to put a, a tampon in. Okay. That's TikTok saying, yeah, this is what we want Americans and Canadians in the Western culture to see. We want this to be normal. So if there is a ban and it helps this one little girl, mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. I'll go down for that one. But hey, whatever happens, happens. They won't they won't delete her account, so maybe they need to delete the app. I'm cool. And again, this is a guy who makes his living on social media and he and this is a person that that that's that's right. Okay, same thing with me. If protecting like if creators got together and said, Look, we're all gonna stop creating on these platforms until YouTube takes it down, YouTube would take it down tomorrow. Take it down right now. OK, but if all creators had a choice, creators with a conscience and they said, would you delete your stuff if it meant that kids would be gone from this platform? Most creators with a conscience would say, yeah, yeah, I would. I would, too. I would leave this platform if YouTube said, look, we'll get rid of all kids on this platform if you delete your channel. It would be gone in an hour. Bye. Absolutely. I would do that. 
Okay. I can talk about other things on other platforms and I can maybe re rebound and do something else and talk about something here. But I absolutely would make that choice. And Scott's saying the same thing here. But look at the arguments he was getting. Exploitation has been, on children has been going on long before TikTok. And it's okay, but it doesn't make it right. I get that, but this is such a strange comment to me. Since the beginning is going on for so long, does it mean we just stop caring about it? And the guy says, no, I'm just suggesting that banning TikTok doesn't solve the root problem. This person will find other ways to exploit our child. Yeah, and it's Daniel's right. He's right. Unfortunately, he is. But it is a start because that's her biggest platform. And now that it's being exposed for what it is, it's going to be harder for her to gain that platform back. It really is. And it'll just be full of predators and she'll still do it. This needs to be a, this like, again, if you just start protecting kids, you don't have to worry about these things, social media platforms. The one less thing you got to worry about. So he, he, you know, some people are still like, there are still people who, for whatever reason, go to bat for child exploiters on these platforms because they want to see kids. And not all of them are maliciously wanting to see children. Not all of them are predators. Okay. A lot of them are just want to see kids because I like seeing kids. That's why the, that's why having kids in your content is so lucrative because people like it. It's innocent. Some generally, um, you know, uh, some of the kids are cute and some of them say funny things. And we all, you know, there's been shows like, you know, about kids all the time. It is a very lucrative thing, right? But again, if you know your kids are being watched by predators and being and it's being used for a certain thing, you take it down. All right, all I have to say, this is what the TikTok guy says. And he's uh, this is the response to the TikTok ban. And he they actually weaponized their platform to reach out to all the creators to and paid for their trip to come down to, to and I, I understand why they did it, to come down and like protest this thing. Like they're paying for people's stays and bus trips and flights, like big creators to come down and use their voice because they're going to try to leverage their voice and their influencers to influence people to fight back and message, reach out to your MP or reach out to your, your senator or whatever and say, don't do this. That's what they try it's not going to work more people are waking up to this right more and more people even creators like scott d henry's like look if this is going to help protect people get rid of it i think there's only uh, if you get 100 creators making a lot of money on here 30 of them are going to be like die hard no don't get rid of it most of them are going to be like oh well because even people who make money on social media platforms know how toxic it is and they don't like it it's just a means to an end for a lot of people hi everyone the show here just wanted to share some thoughts with our U.S. users about the disappointing vote in the House of Representatives. There has been a lot of misinformation, and I hope to clarify some things. For mm, let's hear it. First, thank you to our incredible community. You are what makes TikTok so special. Especially those child exploiters. Thank you for making your voices heard. Over the last few years, we have invested to keep your data safe. No, you haven't. It's owned by the Chinese Com Communist Party, so. No, you haven't. You can't invest anything when you're owned by communists. There's nothing you can do. And a communist wants that thing. They're going to take it because it's owned by them. If you don't know how communism works, the government owns everything and you get what you get. Okay. If they want to take it, they'll take it and give it to someone else. Okay. You, there's, I don't care if you, what do you mean you invested? Invest. <laughs> you think the government's just going to be like, well, okay, cool. You invested. Because you know, if the Chinese government really wants it, they'll take it. Even if they don't have it now, which they probably do, they can take it. And this guy knows, like, if you ask him, if the Chinese Communist Party came to you, the leader, Xi Jinping, and said, I want this, are you going to tell him no? No? You're going to tell him no? No, you're going to give it over. And our platform, free from outside manipulation, we have committed that we will continue to do so. You can't. The thing is, the government knows you can't do so unless it is owned by an American entity. You cannot. You can't sit there and say it's safe. When you can't keep it safe because you're, the, the setup of the Chinese government doesn't allow for that. It can take it when it wants it. I don't understand how people don't get that. This legislation, if signed into law, will lead to a ban of TikTok in the United States. Even the bill sponsors Good. admit that that's their goal. Yeah, this well, bill yeah. gives more power to a handful of other social media companies. It will also take billions of... That's true, though. I'll give him that. It will give Zuckerberg more power. It'll give Elon Musk more power. It'll give who owns the other ones? It's just basically Zucker and Zuckerberg. And, yeah. Zuckerberg is going to be is wanting this. And I bet you it, it, dollars to donuts. There's been millions and millions and millions of dollars poured into uh, them lobbying for this, by the way. So. But again, if it protects kids on this platform, good. And now it doesn't help all the platforms. But if they do this and imagine Meta then says, because I think that Zuckerberg stood up and apologized and that's a big defining moment in this talk. I think eventually Zuckerberg will say, we got to protect the kids. Like it's going to get so loud, the voice against child exploitation, so loud they're going to have to be forced. And maybe by law, they'll be forced to do it. And so imagine that TikTok's gone. 
And then Zuckerberg says, look, let's protect kids. Let's do a little bit more. That's a good, that's a good, that's an added value to our entire population. Dollars out of the pockets of creators and small businesses. It will put more than 300,000 American jobs at risk and it will take away. What? No, it won't. Don't be so silly. Don't be so dumb. You're 300,000 jobs. What? TikTok. We know how important TikTok is to all of you. It has given our 170 million users a platform to freely express themselves and to freely exploit children in the wild west. But I don't get to freely express myself on there. What's his name? I don't even know this guy's name. I don't get to freely express myself. I've been banned on this thing three times and I just say the same stuff I say on this platform. Likely it's just taken from YouTube, turned into a short and put on there. I don't have free speech on TikTok, right? If I'm speaking out against the, prob the, the exploitation of children, you don't like that. I don't have free speech, so don't lie. Don't lie. That's why Scott Henry, that's why Mom Uncharted, that's why people can't say names. There is no freedom to do that, by the way, because people are scared their platforms will be destroyed if they say a name. So spare me free speech. And it's empowered more than 7 million businesses in the United States. Those businesses also are on Meta, also are on X. They're also ever. There's others. This guy's talking about like TikTok is the only social media platform. They'll migrate. They'll be okay. Platform matters to the small business owners who rely on TikTok to make ends meet, to the teacher. They rely on all social media to make ends meet if you're smart. If you have only TikTok and that's how you make ends meet, you're dumb. You're a bad business person. You should probably lose your business anyway. Who inspire millions of students to learn and to everyone who discovers and finds joy on TikTok. Are you, are you telling me that t <laughs> teachers on TikTok inspire kids to learn? <laughs> what? No, they don't. Okay? No, they don't. Don't be so stupid. We will not stop what? fighting and advocating for you. We will continue oh. to do all we can. Yeah, okay. Including exercising our legal rights to protect this amazing platform that we have built with you. We believe we can overcome this together. I encourage you. I hope you can't. Keep sharing your stories. Share them with your friends. Share them with your family. Sh and I'll fly you out to DC. Share them with your senators. Protect your constitutional rights. Make your voices heard. Shut up. <laughs> Here's my comment. <laughs> I hope TikTok is banned on every country on earth. And shoe we trust, someone says. No, I wouldn't trust somebody from the Communist Party. I like how everybody's against Russia, and you should be for what they did to Ukraine. But that's the Communist Party. But you're for the Chinese Communist Party? Make it make sense. Thanks. So here's another uh, article that I, that I saw was really important. Uh, this is from CBS News. I really don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this TikTok bill that just passed the U.S. House. With its force and its speed, it was like a locomotive. It was introduced just a day and a week ago, last Tuesday. It passed unanimously through the pivotal House Energy and Commerce Committee. In this yep. day and age, you can't Unheard get a bill of. unanimously through a committee that says puppy dogs are cute and that ice cream is delicious. What if you're lactose intolerant? What if that puppy is a pit bull? Offend. I'm offended. And then today, by an overwhelming margin, it passed the U.S. House. The, the, the weirdest of... By the way, this guy's voice is like butter smothered in syrup. It's really nice. Politically composed groups backing it and opposing it. And Marjorie Taylor Greene and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in the no column. Republican yep. and much of the Democratic leadership in the yes column. But it's also noteworthy how TikTok tried to leverage itself unsuccessfully ahead of the <laughs> yeah, They had their users, their yeah. influencers, Listen. the kind of people who have like one or two million followers to be here to speak to media and to get an audience potentially with legislators you know, out there outside the Capitol when the vote was happening. We know that TikTok helped pay for their transport, mm -hmm. put them up while they were here. TikTok says it didn't pay them a, a salary or a fee. Mm. Paid for their trip. But instead of putting their leadership, their CEO, their management in front of us and in front of legislators, uh, to a degree, they had more of their influencers there. Interesting PR strategy, but Didn't work. so far, not a successful political one. Why don't you have a referendum? Why don't you have a referendum? Okay, ask your entire population, force them to vote on it. Okay, force rec forced vote rec referendum. I know people are like, eh, no, no. referendums are huge. I, more big laws should be passed by referendum if you could do it smart, right? And safely and easily. Okay, you know what a referendum is? You just like in this country years and years ago, Quebec wanted to separate and they had a referendum. They let the people vote. 
said, are we going to separate? And that's anything with the separation, you're going to have a referendum anyway. And it was like 51 to 50, 51 to 49. It was crazy. Okay. It was crazy. They almost separated from this country, but referendums are, are very powerful means of getting something passed. Take a referendum of all 370 million Americans who can vote of voting age. Okay. Maybe even below voting age, like 13 and above and ask them, do, you know, should it be banned? See, I, you'd be very surprised what happens. Lawmakers don't like referendums, generally speaking, because referendums actually represent the people, and they don't. Politicians don't want plebs making choices. <laughs> this moves now to the U.S. Senate, where some of the key players have indicated some support, but everything slows down in the Senate. There will be no freight train speeding there. Never know. Zuckerberg's got a lot of money. So here's here's a little snippet of those creators at the place in D.C. March 12th talking. This app is so much more than just an app for dumb TikTok dances. Well, that's mostly what it is, though. So. so when I hear these elected officials literally mock and make fun of TikTok and its creators, I'm disgusted. The mess. Well, that's because the majority of it is garbage. Now, there are great creators. and Maybe he's one of them. Okay, but the majority of TikTok is toxic cesspool of garbage. It really is. It's bad for your daughter, bad for your son, it's bad for us, it's bad for people as a whole. TikTok is garbage. And the pervasive nature of people who exploit children on there is a big problem. Okay, it's a huge problem. Some of the biggest creators on TikTok are family vloggers who exploit children. 17, 18 million freaking, you got Maya Knight over there with 10 million, nine, well, she had 9 million at one point, now she's way down. Dr. D. Dozen with 6 million. People have millions of followers on here. And you are feeding this algorithm to people to, to literally destroy a country. And if people are like, well, you shouldn't let it destroy you, that's, sorry, people are stupid. The mob mentality is what it is. It's studied, it's science. Like this stuff is, is a psyop on purpose and it's very successful. Okay, so if you are so good at creating, create on another platform. There are many out there that will pay you. YouTube will pay you more. I don't understand why like these people are here. Go on YouTube. Go on Meta. Message that I really want to get home to the American government and everybody that is trying to pass this bill is you will be destroying small businesses like us. No, you won't. There's other platforms. And again, more all the, it's not like the eyeballs will just stop watching social media. They'll just migrate. So it won't destroy any of your business. You'll just continue posting your shorts on the other platforms who've created a very, very, very similar platform to TikTok with shorts on YouTube, with shorts on Instagram and Facebook, okay? It's not going to change anything. Those eyeballs aren't gonna disappear. They're just gonna migrate. How stupid are you? This is our livelihood. If you pass this bill, you will be destroying the American dream. No, you won't. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's rhetoric is stupid. Don't listen to people who say stupid shit like this, okay? That we cool. really believe in. B.O.B. In D.C. working to keep TikTok. Wow. <laughs> Great video in keeping TikTok. Okay, you ready? Okay, I'm going to walk now. You good? Okay, press the cord. Okay, good. And, 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 that's it. Are these the people you're going to use to try to keep TikTok? Because that's not going to work for the rest of us. See, this is what they've been told to do, right? Call the Capitol switchboard and tell your reps to vote no on TikTok ban. Call your senators. No, F off. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Look, it's a day of letting our voice appear. There's like six people there. No one really gives a crap about influencers, everybody. Let's be real. People who work real jobs in the real world, they don't give a crap about you influencers. They don't, and they shouldn't. Okay, you get all these people, all these influencers like, my life is so hard, it's, I'm so busy. I absolutely just mm, hate when influencers sit there and try to be like real people, try to be like, look at how hard our life is. We travel all the time. <laughs> I get free shit all day long. Like, spare me. Most people would be like, okay, we don't care. And that's the way it is. And that's why you have eight people standing there. TikTok creators who took time out of their TikTok creation to come stand and say, get it back. There's not anybody there. You have no support. That should tell you everything you need to know. Many small business will, will lose the majority. See, they're just giving them talking points. And the fact that people are sitting here spouting the talking points is crazy to me. You're spouting the talking points of the Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> okay. So in conclusion, ban TikTok. Go for it. I want to see what happens. I really do. TikTok is not going to destroy anybody's jobs. Anybody who uses social media for their job is on all the platforms, by the way. So spare me. And if you're not, then you're stupid. 
But TikTok allows really dumb people who have really garbage content to go viral way faster than everybody else. Okay, it's just not as acceptable on the other platforms to do the shit that they're doing, which is why they don't go as viral. Now, a lot of people will grow their TikTok and then grow the other platforms first because TikTok, for whatever reason, grows way faster because more people are on it, right? It's easier to subscribe, it's short form content, blah, blah, blah. But all the other platforms have made a way. So if your whole argument is that we're going to lose our money, <laughs> why don't you use the other platforms? If you have followers, they'll follow you there too. I don't want to hear that dumb excuse, okay? In the end, if these platforms didn't exploit children, we might not have a big problem like this, okay? That's my big argument. That's a lot of big people. That's a lot of arguments from a lot of people. I don't think this would be as big a deal if we just started protecting kids from the beginning, okay? I wouldn't be here. And a lot of people would like that. <laughs> Same. We have let this go on far too long. When it comes to protection of our children, a lot of people get up in arms about it and they should. And that really mobilizes a lot of people. Now, is this, is this all this happening because of child abuse? No, but it is a part of it. For sure. And the legislation is making that known when they did that big thing, when they brought all the guys in. Okay. That's a big deal. It's happening. Like Zuckerberg, if you get more control, if you get the lion's share of the TikTok users, if this gets banned, do me a favor, would you? Protect kids. Okay. Because it would make you, you're not going to lose money. You'll be fine. Okay. Protect kids. That's all we, that's all we ask. And then maybe there won't be such a big problem. Let adults do the adult thing, have their free speech, do what they want, but protect kids because they can't do what they want. They don't have consent. They can't give consent. They don't have a choice. Okay. Adults have the choice to do what they want, but kids don't. And that's why we're here. That's why we talk about this. That's why this is important. That's why I want TikTok banned. Okay. Cool. Thanks for joining me today. Everybody take a deep breath. It's a big one. What do you guys think below? You want TikTok banned? What are your arguments for and against it? You think the government should have this much power? I don't think so. But at the same time, I've said this a million times. If parents are going to fail to protect their children, Unfortunately, it's time for the government to step in. And that's always going to be bad, too. So it's the lesser of two evils. And in this case, protecting kids is the pro. So if the government is pro-protecting kids, that's the lesser of the two evils. Even though it's going to end up with a bunch of crap. That's for sure. But you guys aren't a bunch of crap. You're amazing. Thank you for being here. I am very, very grateful for you and the voice that I have when it comes to this type of thing. My Roman Empire is your Roman Empire. Let's Roman Empire this together and help protect kids on social media. Shall we? You are awesome. Some kind of something. Somebody has a huge crush on you. Okay. And I will see you in the next video.